Hey, it's Renegode here, and today I want to go through an example with Java of how we can use dependent injection together with the framework Spring. And just quickly, in my last video, I showcased and talked about this basic diagram. Okay, we have this name generator app using some kind of inf interface, we then have an implementation, we then use our assembler, which in this case is going to be our Spring IOC container, which then injects using inversion of control this implementation of this name generator interface into our name generator app. So how we actually do this in Java with Spring is as follows. We have our name generator app, which is then defined by our component. So just to quickly mention, we are going to be using annotations, which is just the thing where we annotate our classes or methods or constructors define something this is then known by spring and is then used for our dependent injection but we have our name dinner app which is annotated with add component which means it's going to be created into app spring bean which is just the main thing spring uses to create objects so we have our name generator app which is a component we then have our name generator which is based on polymorphism so based on our interface just created and not initialized yet we then use constructor injection where inside our constructor we then take an implementation of this interface and just set this implementation to this attribute and for this then to be dependency injected we then have the tag auto wired which simply lets bring know that we would like something to be automatically injected into this constructor then in this case, we just have some information to print whatever's going on to so just, just showcase everything works. But what we're then injecting into our constructor is going to be our implementation of name generator interface. So first, I have a package called services, where I just have the simple name generator interface, which just simply have one abstract method called get generated name. And here we can also see that it is, I just defined to showcase that this abstract method is gonna be public and abstract, but because we are inside an interface, they're always gonna be public and abstract, so that's actually not needed. We just need to define the return type and the name of our abstract method. We then have our name generator, which then implements this name generator interface. And again, we are now defining that this name generator is gonna be a component so it's going to be accessible by Spring. We then override our get generator name method. In this case, I just made it very simple. So we're not generating any names. In this case, we're just returning James every time. So now when you then run it inside main, we need a few extra steps to actually set up Spring. So we need something called an application context. It's kind of like the backbone of Spring, which kind of sets up the entire application. And to do this, we can do it in two ways. We can either, like I'm doing here, create an application context based on a new annotation config application context, which then in this case takes in a class. And then this is just a simple setup class that defines where we're gonna load stuff from and how we're gonna load stuff. We could also do this using some kind of XML file, which defined the same thing. But in this case, I'm just gonna showcase only using annotations. So we have our application context taken in this appconfig.class, which actually just very simply is a class called appconfig, which is empty, but we have two annotations, one add configuration and add component scan, and these two combined then sets up the project using annotations, and we then define from which position will we be scanning. So when we in main start our project, first create this application context, which then based on the app config class, scan the project from common example, which is like our base position of everything, then goes through and initializes everything. And if it finds that, for example, our name generator has the annotation add component, it then initializes and the base of our beans is gonna be as a singleton and then keeps it in some kind of rich tree inside Spring. And when we then as follows, create a name generator app, and we then get it from our context, get bean. So as mentioned, everything is called beans in Spring. 
but we have our context, which is kind of like just a view of the entire application which have been built. We then access our name generator app dot class, and because our name generator app also had add components, going to be built when we are building the entire project. We then access this, and we then just very simply call after print name, and then ten times just in theory it will be printing ten generated names, but in my case it's just going to be printing change ten times. But just to notice, when we then access our app, it's already been loaded in Spring. And because we use AutoWired, it will then simply go to this registry in Spring and say, do we have any implementations of the name generator interface as beans? And in our case, we had, we had this one called generator. And it will then be dependency injected into this app and set as this attribute. And when we then afterwards call print name and simply just go through X amount of times and print X amount of names. In this case, we're going to be printing 10 names. We're just going to get 10 generated names, or in this case, just 10 generated names called names. So actually just to run this and see it actually works. So as you can see, we also get a bit of extra stuff because Spring is running and Spring is loading stuff. But in this case, you just get 10 names of James. But let's say we actually wanted another name generator. Let's say we have name generator 2. And we do not want to use name generator no longer. So I would use add component. Now this no longer be used by Spring. Then our name generator 2 is not going to be printing James. God, it's going to be printing Dan. Dan, for example. So now, without changing anything else, I just created a new class, a new name, but it still implements the interface. And we now run it. We would now be printing Dan instead of James. So we're able to input and change our classes. And it's just going to straight up work inside our name generator app. Because we're not creating an instance in here of name generator, the first one. We're just dependency injecting an implementation that has this functionality. And that's kind of like the base the concept we're going for. The ability to change anything. And because Spring is handling all these connections using inversion control dependency injection, we can just simply change the class. Just make sure it always implements this interface and is a component then it will still work. And just go back to the diagram. That's what we did, name generate app, having an add auto wired inside this constructor to define we would like an implementation of this interface. The assembler then sees this implementation of the interface and using inversion of control, dependence injected into the name generator app. So I hope this helped get a better understanding of how we can do it in Spring. Where in this case, we're using annotations, our basic app config setup, configuration, component scan, scans and loads the entire project. We then get the name generator app class. And everything is then set up using dependency injection. And we can then use it as normal, kind of. But if you enjoyed this quick demonstration, please leave a like and subscribe. And I wish you all a wonderful day.